have a new rule, and it was created today, Tuesday, November 19th. Uh, the rule is that anytime there is a threat of nuclear war, you go heavily long into the market. The reason why is, if it really does come to fruition, it's not going to matter. We'll be all blown to smithereens. And if it doesn't come true, as it never has, then we get a relief rally like we did today with the NASDAQ up 196 points or 1.04 percent closing today at 18,987, 22 percent above the average daily volume. You can see it came down to the 21. It had a tantrum on Friday. It didn't, you know, the, the um, Fed heads were talking about no rate cuts, but the market has figured it out. You know, the, the, the Fed is cutting rates. And when that happens, the multiples expand just like they contracted when they were, you know, um, raising rates. When they lower the rates, the multiples expand. So it's just like a rubber band and uh, the multiples are expanding. The market figured out that the Fed is, you know, going to continue their, um, their lowering of interest rates. Here you can see on the weekly chart. This is when uh, Powell is uh, raising rates. The market just contracts. Uh, and now um, as the uh, the market has figured out at bottom, then it figured out that the, uh, you know, the, the rate hiking cycle is going to be concluded and the market has taken off. Uh, and so multiples expand and some of these stocks that, you know, you hear people say are overvalued. Yeah, they probably are. It's because the multiples are expanding and they're taking on more risk. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but you don't have to, you don't have to think about it. You just follow what, what's going on in the market. Hmm, looks like it's in an uptrend. It's above the 21 now. It's actually above the 10 today. It closed, you know, after closing below the 21 on Friday. Now it's a um, 1.1% above the uh, 21, 3.5% uh, above the 50, and 0.3% uh, above the uh, 10. So as these um, rate cuts are coming in, um, we can see more multiple expansion and stocks are going to become more um, overvalued depending upon who you listen to. I, I don't really buy into that. It's just, um, just look what's going on day by day and that'll tell you. You don't have to think that much about it. Um, a lot of stocks, a lot of the leading stocks are trading hard and that's all you need to know is, uh, the leaders that that's, that will tell you the health of the market. So we're in a strong uptrend. We have a lot of leaders making new highs, showing really strong and big, bold moves. So, um, that, that tells you all you need to know. I guess I'll go to the spy. The spy was, uh, up today, uh, 0.37%. Um, I guess I'll go to the the real S&P 500, because people are making a big deal about 6,000. It got rejected at 6,000, pulled back to the 21. It's fine. It's uh, closed a tick above its 10, 0.7% above the 21. Um, you know, some people get excited. They want to call tops, you know, or bottoms. I, I don't play that game. It's fine. It's in an uptrend. It's doing fine. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, and this one traded down to its 21 today. And uh, the threat of nuclear war. I don't. I don't mean to be flippant about it, because it's serious and people are dying in that war. But you know, these people sit in their ivory towers and say, "Oh, we're going to throw nuclear strikes at you." It's like get out of here. Um, nobody wants to die. Anyway, this one pulled back. We've seen a lot of this action here. This uh, bull wedge type of action, where uh, in stocks, I mean, and it pulls back to the twenty one just like this, and then pops higher. So I would expect the Dow to do that uh, as well. Kind of surprised it was down today after uh, Walmart's news. And the last one I'm going to show is the uh, Russell 2000. Um, pulled back to the 21 and popped, you know, almost 1% today. So that this is what I'm talking about. We're seeing a lot of this in stocks. You know, this pullback, you know, last week we had, what, four straight days of selling. And now uh, Monday and Tuesday we pop a little bit. So anyway, um, I, I'm going to get to stocks because I like trading stocks. I like buying and selling stocks. I'm going to start with Tesla. This is one that uh, has been up, you know, since the election sharply here. Now it pulled back just like I was talking about here last week, pulled back to its 10 here. And now this week has popped a little bit inside day today, uh, which is healthy, you know, consolidating uh, gains. And um, let me see, up to up two and a, uh, two and a quarter percent or 2.14 percent. 
on a inside day, that's pretty good action there because yesterday was a big move of 5.62%. So just an inside day. Tesla looks good, allowing the moving averages to catch up. Now I've, I've got the 10 on here. I'm going to switch it to the five because in, uh, in markets like this and market conditions are everything, it's at the top of my page every morning and you got to pay attention to the market conditions because if you're in a different type of market, you're not going to get this type of action where, you know, they're, they're, this is a five. The green now is the five. And uh, it's it's kind of trading with the five here. Yeah, it fell below it for a day or two, but now it's back above it. So strong stocks in an uptrend like we have now will ride their five EMA. So that's why I switched it here. And I'm going to try to show you some leading stocks. You know, even a blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. And I happen to uh, find a couple of them I'm going to share with you. Um, and, uh, gosh. All right. Before I do that, I'm going to get to, um, well, I have to show you NVIDIA. Since I'm on the MAG7, I'll show you these guys. Uh, yeah, hold that back to the 21 pop today. Going to report earnings tomorrow, so a 5% move doesn't matter. Tomorrow is what matters, what they have to say after hours. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be bullish. I think the stock's going to trade higher, but we just have to wait and see. I don't make predictions and calls on uh, earnings because I've seen good earnings sell off. I've seen poor earnings be rewarded, so... Uh, we just take it one day at a time. I did. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's go to Amazon. I guess I'll show Amazon. You know, I had had people telling me that, you know, since 2022, we've been in a, a stealth recession. I don't think stocks act like this in a stealth recession. In fact, I'm going to go back. I'm going to be uh, kind of an idiot here. Um, <laughs> which is normal, normal for me. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, you know, I had people tell me we're in a stealth recession, uh, you know, from 2022, you know, the end of 2022, which is, I guess, 12, 31, 2022. Oh, come on, Martin. See if I can do this right without hurting myself. 12, 31, 2022. So that would be two years, 2023 and 2024, which have been pretty good years, right? So the NASDAQ's up 81% in the last two years. So if we're in a stealth recession, I, I want more of that stealth recession. Um, I'm going to show you some other stocks that kind of represent um, <laughs> the stealth recession. I, I don't know. People just want to talk, I guess. Uh, SPY in the last, yeah, 54% um, <clears throat> in two years. I think you'll take 25% a year, you know, or 50% in two years. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to be greedy or anything, but Costco is another one of these bellwethers for the consumers. It's up 100%. In the last two years, uh, Walmart, which I'm going to get to in a minute, up 83%. And then the credit card companies, 50% in two years. For MasterCard, Visa, 50%. You know, So if we're in a stealth recession, these kind of stocks wouldn't be performing like this. These indexes wouldn't be performing like this. We saw what that is like in 2022. Anyway, I made my point, and the person uh, that we had this discussion with uh, knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, okay, I got that off my chest. <laughs> I'm going to go to some leading stocks. And since I mentioned Walmart, they reported last night, nice move up 3%. This is one of our leading stocks and it's just surfing that five. Yeah, it pulled back to the 21 a couple times, but strong earnings report. People are shopping. I don't want to hear about any stealth recession. This is a good economy. I uh, just showed you Costco, Walmart. These these companies are doing well. Now, as I say that, I got to go to Lowe's because <laughs> Lowe's fell out today. And that, that stands to reason because with my thesis of all the boomers going on trips and spending their kids' inheritance, they're not staying at home fixing up their homes, right? So uh, this re earnings report was not great and it got punished as it should. Another company that reported... I'm going to go back to, you know, last night and this morning because there was quite a few reports. This is a Viking a strong report. Just pulled back to the 21. And you got to look at this here. This is what, you know, fakes retail people out. So they say, oh, man, the earnings weren't that great. Lots of fear and indecision. And it sells off down to, what, 41 Ooh, in the morning. And then so people panic sell. And then the you know, institution's going to buy it up. Nice high volume close there for Viking. It did nothing wrong today. It was what, down 30, 30 cents. Sometimes you just get that washout on earnings. And, um, you know, if you've held this since the breakout there, 37, you know, you got a nice cushion there. 
Um, so I like biking. A Medtronic also announced. I don't know if that did anything. Eh, down 3%. That doesn't look very good. All right. Who else reported? SYM reported last night. So this, this earnings was rewarded here, 27%. Big volume move above the moving average. That looks really good. Um, TCOM, this fits into my uh, <laughs> boomer thesis. This is a China uh, travel booking stock. And you can see it's kind of choppy, but it was up 2% after earnings. And the last one, I believe, is uh, Bell Ringer Brands. I, I don't know much about this company. Same type of action, though, as Viking. Pull back to its 21 closed you know flat on the session so look at a five minute chart there you go just the washout the comeback yeah nice uh buying into the close so um yeah just flat on the session so um pretty good earnings here you know 18 percent you're seeing you know accelerating uh sales growth there from quarter to quarter anyway i'm gonna move on because i have to get to the stock of the year the stock of the last four years which i showed you yesterday this is micro strategy um, the CEO is buying as much Bitcoin as he can. Uh, I keep talking about this guy every day, Michael Saylor. I, I listened to him at a conference last week talking about we're in the golden era of Bitcoin. The mining will be the next 10 years from 2024 to 2034. He did a secondary offering. Normally on a secondary offering, you know, you'd see, you'd see a nice pullback. Even if it did go higher in the session, you see some... People say, no, I don't want this stock. It's going to go down, right? No, there's buying all day. So the, the demand in micro strategy is off the charts. It's eating up the supply like Pac-Man. As I date myself, the old video game that, that we used to play as kids, but uh, <laughs> not, not really kids, probably in college. Anyway, um, the demand is eating up all the supply here in micro strategy. And how do I know? Well, look at the big blue volume bars. You know, they've been doing secondaries. He's been selling stock. It doesn't matter what he does. You know, people want to buy this stock. They're clamoring for it. There's fear of missing out now. But I'm going to point out, because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, it's overvalued. It's, you know, it's it's climax top, blah, blah, blah. No. Tell them to shut up. Don't listen to them. Uh, typically, I'm going to go through another you know, rant here. Anyway, it's okay. I'm fired up today. Um, so MicroStrategy it has been in a base since um, March 29 to 2024, okay? And it didn't break out until October 11th. So if you're looking at 27 weeks of consolidation, you if you've been with me very long, you know how much I love bases, okay? So it broke out of that base, okay? So count with me now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, okay? It's been running for seven weeks which, okay, maybe some people think it's a little long in the tooth, okay, but I'm going to take you to Palantir because Palantir is another leading stock. And I'm just talking about leading stocks in a strong uptrend. That's it. That's what this rule applies to, okay? So this one went up, broke out of a consolidation, a base of 17 weeks, which is fine, the third stage base on August 9th, okay? So if you can, count with me now, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 weeks, okay? And that is about the length of a rally of a leading stock breaking out of a base, you know, 16 to 18 weeks, 14 to 18 weeks, you know, three to four months. That's how long they run. Typically in an uptrending market, a leading stock, which Palantir is, okay? So there's, I know there's a lot of qualifications there, but historically, you know, it's been, it's not uh, an opinion. It's not my opinion. It's fact. If you just study these uh, model book stocks. So anyway, yeah, 14 to 18 weeks. This thing's at 16 that I count. I don't know. I ran out of fingers. But anyway, if if I was, if I owned Palantir, I would sell it and buy App 11, which I wouldn't because I already own App 11. But you say, why? This thing's way extended. It's a, uh, Somebody told me it was 90% above its 50, so it's a sell. Okay, you should say so, but I don't think so. If I owned it, you know, and if you got it, especially coming out of this base, once again, breaking out of the base. When did it break out of the base? Uh, September 13th, so about a month after Palantir. So count with me now, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's about five weeks behind Palantir. I think it's got a couple more weeks to go. I said 14 to 18. Maybe this one cuts out at 14 and just crashes and burns. I don't know. I don't think so, though. And if you have a cushion from 91, hello. I mean, sell some, donate it to charity, you know, Wounded Warriors, uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Leukemia, Cancer. You can donate to any charity you like. But, man, that is a hell of a move. You can still sell some. Keep your uh, Take your initial capital out. Just let that baby run. It's doing nothing wrong. I put this on our um, ready list late today because <laughs> because of the uh, the nuclear you know story and the markets look bad. But I added it during the day, and I'm going to do that during the sessions, uh, update it because I see stocks after about an hour, hour and a half that I like. And I said, shoot, I should have put them on. Well, I'm just going to put them on. Uh, so I'm going to check during the day. Anyway, you know, <clears throat> we've been following this. Uh, you know, and I was hoping that it would uh, make a, you know, three weeks tight pattern, but it's mixed things. You can't always get what you want. So this thing was knocking at 300, you know, not three times. There it is at uh, 302 on what, Thursday of last week. Uh, Friday it was up and a week tape. Uh, Monday, 302.40. And today was the third day. So knock three times is Tony Orlando and Dawn would sing uh, knock three times. On the ceiling, if you want me, twice on the pipe, if you're not going to show. And this one showed today. And if you got that, you know, through 300, you know, you know, it's up 321. So you're 20 points to the good now. Um, and I, I know a lot of people at MC Stock Charts have this and just uh, are just kind of trying to hold. And one of the hardest things to do is hold a winning stock. You have a tiger by the tail. You don't know what to do. Do I sell half of it? Do I take profits? I don't want to lose my profit. But like I said, if you bought way back here, um, you have a lot of cushions. So you can, you have nice options. You can sell a quarter, let it run, sell your initial capital, let it run, sell half, let it run. But to me, I would let it run. This is one of the big winners of this, uh, you know, this bull market, current uptrend, this rally. Um, so I think it has more more room to run but that's just me uh, that's just one person's opinion um i do have a little bit of um history to back it up though studies show micro strategy app Levin still have room to run palantir i think is a little long in the tooth so that's my story i'm sticking to it all right <laughs> that's my story okay we we noticed that the um i'm going to go back to micro strategy because this is what i was talking about earlier i just want you to notice that the um the buy point here was 200, okay? We had this on our ready list at 200. What did it do though with 200? It, it tried to break out and then pull back. It's like a fake breakout, right? <clears throat> now, remember this is before the election and things were kind of cautious, right? So it ran up to uh, from two, I don't know, from the bottom one, 113 up to uh, what? 227.15 on the 14th, right? Then pulled back a couple of sessions, went kind of flat. And didn't really break out here till this move, a 10% move on the 24th, made a new high on the 29th. And of course, got cautious ahead of uh, the U.S. elections here and then started popping after since the election has been going crazy. And so is Bitcoin. So this is a this is like a proxy for Bitcoin. Um, it was only up 12% today and yeah, up after hours. So you got to look at the price of Bitcoin, too, because it is a proxy. But since I showed you that. The fake breakout, and then the pullback. I shouldn't say a fake breakout. It was a breakout that failed. Pulled back to a moving average and then started its run. And that's a hell of a run. It, you know, it's up more than 100% in a short period of time. So now we look at Coinbase. And it's got, I had this on the ready list last week. I took it off this week because I'm a moron. It's got this uh, buy point right there at 283. So it had this failed breakout. I'm not going to call it a fake breakout. Uh, it had a failed breakout, ran up here. I don't know what day was this? I think we know what day this is, right? Come on, help me. 11-11, uh, Veterans Day. Okay, so it ran up to 334, then pulled back to its five. Okay, that's the five. And now it's starting to gain traction again. This is a uh, Monday, up 6%. And today had an inside day. I still think this is actionable. This inside day, it pulled back to 315 today. Because I think it might do something not like a micro strategy. Of course not. It's a different animal. Uh, it's got a little more um, shares in the float. 
Uh, but and it's a different type of product. But I still think you know the the price of Bitcoin going higher, Coinbase I believe is going to go higher, and I believe this is going to be. And I shouldn't say a model stock. It's going to be a big winner, I believe. Um, the group is really strong, and Coinbase is definitely one to um, pay attention to. Don't get fooled by those uh, failed breakouts. And anyway, this is Robin Hood. This one broke out. This one's running. Pull back to its uh, 50 uh, on uh, Halloween, which was a nasty day, but then has been running ever since. And you can see it's just running It's with its five. You're surfing the five. So this is a really strong market, really strong leading stocks are going to be supported at the five. So that's that's where you need to, uh, you know, buy them, you know, and if you're, you know, a quick trader, you know, buy here, sell here or whatever. Uh, Coin, uh, Coinbase and Robinhood both look good to me. Robinhood is a little stronger. And of course, MicroStrategy is the big winner of the crypto group. I got to go to IBIT because this one started trading options today, <laughs> which people get excited about options. Uh once again, if you just look at the green line, all right, it's like um, follow the bouncing ball, the old Mitch Miller songs. Man, I'm really dating myself now, but but it pulls back to the five, right? And it's supported by the five. And this is just exchange traded fund corresponding to the you know price of Bitcoin. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop there because I'm going a little crazy with uh, this Bitcoin micro strategy stuff. There's other stocks in the market. One is Nvidia. Very important stock. Obviously, they report tomorrow. I've, I've covered this already ad nauseum. Um, everybody talks about NVIDIA. I don't see how you can have an AI revolution without NVIDIA going higher. So that's kind of my thesis. Um, yeah, you know, people say, oh, we're in 1999. The market's getting ready to crash. Well, maybe if we, if we do, this will be the Qualcomm of 2000. It'll crash before the market does. So, um, yeah, so it's an important, it's a very important uh, earnings report tomorrow. And it's going to affect some of these other partners. You know, this is a partner, Estera Labs. This one uh, pulled back. I've been talking about this pattern for a while now because we're seeing these bull wedge patterns where you know, the stock pulls back. Now, this one did pull back to the 10, but I'm not going to toggle back. Uh, anyway, it popped uh, Monday and Tuesday. Um, nice moves here. I know some people ask, uh, a lot of questions about certain stocks. App Lovin is one, MicroStrategy, and so is A-Lab. Um, so on Friday, it pulled back to, what, 85. It did not undercut the low of the gap day, and that's what I pay attention to. I put it on our ready list because it held that gap day of uh, the low was 84.11, and then on Friday, it traded down to 85.01. I was hoping that it wouldn't go before 84.11, and it didn't. So it held, and then Monday comes in, Rallies uh four and a half percent today. Rallies five point three percent. Had a lot of questions. Yeah, I think that's actionable. I think you could start a you know quarter position or something in it. And if it acts well, you know you could add to it. If it breaks through one hundred like uh, App Lovin did, um, then you can add to it. Right? It's been up there before uh, ninety nine, one hundred and nine. Maybe just maybe with a good report from Nvidia, this thing could rally right through one hundred and not have that resistance that App Lovin did for a couple of uh, cracks at it. Anyway, another um, <clears throat> semiconductor fabulous name that I like is Broadcom. Just consolidating in a base, not doing anything wrong. I know the market was up a lot and it was flat today and it's below its 50, but I'd still keep my eye on this one. Uh, definitely going to move with NVIDIA's numbers tomorrow and so is AMD. They announced new products. And um, yeah, I had a good day yesterday, but man, kind of rough go for AMD so far below its 200. All right, that's it for the semiconductors. I'm going to move on because I have to talk about another one that I had on my ready list this week, and that is a BRT. I listened to their conference call, not conference call, Investor Day last night. And it was it was a couple hours long, more than a couple hours. Um, they, they even had an intermission. It was so long, but I'm a nerd. So I listened to it while I watched the Cowboys lose. And uh, very impressive, taking market share. They didn't raise guidance because they just reported earnings and they don't report again until February 19th. So it'd be kind of silly, like, oh, we just reported earnings three weeks ago and all of a sudden we're raising again. So they reiterated guidance, but they did say they're taking market share and that's going to show up when they report on the 19th. This is a steady eddy. I like the way this one trades, not just because it popped 16% this week, but you can see how tight it trades within the base. 
three weeks tight here and now it's starting to pop, you know, um, after the election and since, you know, that um, investor day yesterday. Very impressive. I want to put some slides on mcstockcharts.com so you can kind of see what they had to say on uh, Monday at their conference. Pretty impressive. I think it's going higher. Of course, that's me. I think all my stocks are going higher. But anyway, I'm biased. I admit it. IONQ, this is one that reported last week, I believe. Nice response to their earnings. You could see it had this uh, couple of ants days where it was up like, you know, 12 out of 15 days with volume. But you can see the volume is definitely piling into this one. And it was up only 10% today. Nice move for uh, IONQ. You can see the pullback here. Man, this thing is, this is extended, folks. 25% above the 21, 88% hmm. above the 50. So almost at an app loving territory. All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, AMSE, not a stock that I talk a lot about, but it is an impressive stock. It's set up in a base, which I'm going to show you some stocks set up in bases today, which I haven't been because I've been focusing on leading stocks. But there are some stocks set up. You might consider them laggards, but this one just pulled back to its 21. Uh, set up in a base here, not trading... You know, you can see the difference here. This is this is tight trading. See the average daily ranges here, and now it makes this base, and it's kind of wider and looser. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't think I'm going to put that one on because it is a little too wide and loose for me. And then GTES is another one, electrical power equipment stock in with the Vertiv. The group is not that strong, top eighty. But look at this one breaking out of a base. And now uh, trading above its 5E in May there. So Gates Industrial is looking good. Kind of a, you know, the, you know the smaller cap, 5 billion market cap, but, um you know, not an expensive stock. All right, I'm going to move on out of this group to my energy group. Another one that I put on late today was VST. You know, I was going to put it on, but, you know, then the, the, war, the world was going to come to an end with the nuclear threats. And anyway, this one uh, is consolidating their base. I think long enough. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And if it wants to pop out of this base, which it did today, uh, five something percent, it has that buy point there at 143.87. It blew right through that. You know, on um, last week, Friday was kind of a rough week and it um, pulled back. Uh, here you can see, this is a five minute chart. Here's your pullback on uh, last week, Thursday. But then on Friday, it showed strength in that weak tape. Friday was weak. Yesterday had a nice little gain here. And then today, just step on the gas, Jack. And uh, anyway, that's another one that I like. Uh, above the 143.87. Now it's above 150. Heck, it's close at 154. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the top performing stock in the S&P 500. So it's not that I like it. It's the institutions that are driving this stock and taking it higher. And that's what we want to follow is the institution, these big blue volume bars. So um, same thing with app love and um, getting the getting the love from Wall Street. And when they make a position that, you know, they don't you know buy all at once, they buy and they come back and buy and they come back and buy over and over and over again until they establish their full position. It's the same thing with A-Lab and a lot of these winners that I'm showing you. Um, okay, anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm going to stop preaching here. Uh, GEV, this one bounced, uh, pull back, you know, talk about this wedge pattern here. And it, it tried to do this on Friday. Maybe I should go back to the five minute because it really bummed me out. Some people were asking me about it. I said, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Friday looked like it was really going to rip, but then the tape was so weak. You know, this is a nice start to the day, but then into the weekend, into the close, it just sold off. And then, um, this is yesterday. Oh, we're going lower. Oh, no, we're not. And then, you know, kind of weak into the close. But today, step on the gas, Jack, just trading higher. Um, yeah, nice bounce off the moving average. Close near the high of the daily range, which is always something to watch for if you want to, you know, have a follow through into the next day. 98% of that daily range closed at 340. $14 move or 4.5% for uh, GEV. One of the leaders in this uh, energy group, uh, Talon, nice bounce there off 200. This is another one that I was going to put on like VST, but I like VST a little better. But that 197.61, you know, it, it broke out of that 
little Darvis box, if you will, and it's trading above it now. So it's getting support at the five EMA. That one looks good. All right, I'm going to move on. I've got to go to the um, software names. A lot of software names that I like. I showed you App Loving. This is Duolingo. Just uh, <clears throat> they reported recently. Uh, it was kind of a weird bar in that day. It might have been this day here. Big bar, yeah, bearish engulfing at that. Oh, it's not going anywhere. Now, today it popped 5% off its 21. So this one looks uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, this is the day here on, uh, gosh, come on. November 11th, it was Veterans Day. I had this big bar, looked like it was going to go lower, traded below its five. But, you know, like I say, anytime it's above the 21, this is a rule. <laughs> if your stock is trading above the 21, which is this magenta line, and it's going higher, and it's trading above it, you're making money. You know, I mean, you don't have to overthink it. If it's below the 21, no bueno. It's above the 21, and it's a rising 21. You're making money. You don't have to hold it very long, and you're into chips, boss. All right, let me see. GoDaddy is another one that I like. Uh, God, I really like GoDaddy. This one, um, yeah, just uh, supported by the five. Breakout here, a base. You know, got to have a base. You can't just keep going up and up and up forever unless you're micro strategy. Um, this one, uh, cup with handle, broke out, now supported at the five. I mean, that's textbook stuff right there. It looks really, really good. Uh, Palantir, I showed you earlier. I think it's a little long in the tooth, but it's supported at the five. So as long as it's doing that, it's all right. And then, you know, I think this one's just a little long and the rally's a little long in the tooth. So it'll probably still go higher because it's a leading stock. And, you know, institutions love it. As you can see by these big blue volume bars here, this is this is all you need to know. The stock is going higher as it's getting these institutional support here. So, yeah, that's all you need to know. I mean, a kindergartner can say, hey, that's going higher. All right, uh, I'm going to stop being a jerk and go to AI. AI, AI's artificial intelligence just went up 24% on a deal with Microsoft that was announced today. Microsoft is holding some event this afternoon. I, I've got a clue in on that because Microsoft is a big kahuna of the software group and they, they could, they have the power to move not only the sector, but the markets. Um, so I'm going to tune into that after I get through um, blowing gas around here. All right, <laughs> CLBT. This is Cellbrite. This is one that I haven't talked about very much, but if you, you know, followed me, if you watched any of these videos very long, let's eliminate this 21 here and just go by this little bull wedge pattern back to the 50 and now a pop of 7%. So nice move from Cellbrite. One of the leaders uh, that I have on the leading stock list. It's just a quiet stock that nobody talks about, but, um, you know, I, I kind of like it. You can see the consolidation, the base to move higher. Three weeks tight, and I like tight. And um, yeah, this is a really, this is a really good stock. Uh, it's performing well. All right, I'm going to switch gears and go to the food group. DoorDash. We like our food served at home to us, don't we? We're just lazy. Want to watch football and uh, have this food come to our door. DoorDash. This is just a you know I think a model book stock here. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of creating these IPOs, and I'm doing them by years. So 2024, then I'm going to go 2023, then I'm going to go prior to 23, you know, like 20 to 22. And, th and this one fits in there because I just like this, uh, uh, this um, base, IPO base. So of course, during the bear market, it came in. Now we have the um, start of the uh, bull market, you know, and the Fed is more of a, a friendly to us, not just hawkish. And uh, as this one makes this cup with handle move, it's just been trending higher and higher and higher. It was up nine weeks in a row and it fell one week last week, uh, up another 4% in two days this week. So what was the damage here on this one bad week? 1.15%. So I think longer term, I really like DoorDash. I don't know. I'm just partial sometimes. I have biases too. All right. Uh, Kava. You know, some people were uh, getting after me saying this one has uh, made its, uh, you know, broken its upper channel line, I guess. You know, you can draw you can draw lines wherever you want, right? I mean, yeah, you could say, yeah, it broke its upper channel line, I guess. On uh, this earnings move, I don't like 
the move higher and then the uh, the rejection here. If I take a look at maybe a 15 minute chart, yeah, we could see that big move higher, the gap higher, and then selling off. But it's just coming back to the levels that it was before earnings. You know, that 140 area, that's not the end of the world. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it performs. I mean, we are in a strong uptrending market. 140 is not the end of the world for Kava there. It's had a hell of a run. Um, and yes, this is going to be one of the ones that, uh, you know, my um, IPO stocks for sure. This one looks fantastic, along with A-Lab and some of the others. You're going to have to wait and see until I uh, bust out my IPO uh, video. All right. Shake Shack. <laughs> the news today on Shake Shack was uh, Delta Airlines is going to serve Shake Shack uh, burgers and fries on their flights, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't get me excited, but whatever. It, we've seen this. Nah, I don't want to call it a... It's just kind of a wedge pattern here where it pulls back. This one closed... You know, below the 21, though, and couldn't rally back through it. So that's something to watch for if you're long Shake Shack. Had this nice, um, you know, cup with handle consolidation, broke out with earnings. Uh, but now it's 1.7% um, below the 21. So it has work to do. Sweet Greens had a nice move today. It's been under pressure a little bit uh, since earnings. But it rallied back through its 50 today. So, you know, make note of that move right there. And then Bro's. Bros is one that I really like because I know they're taking market share from um, um, Starbucks. It's got, you know, it had this high on the um, earnings day where it gapped higher. And now it's right back to that level. Okay, so it's knocking at that, uh, what, what was it, 5024. Uh, ran up a couple times here. Um, yeah, 4950. Now today, 4985. So I like it above. The 5024, I would put that on the ready list. 5024, uh, yeah, the five right here, pull back to the five. You see that uh, last week when the, the market sold off and then found support in the last couple of days it's been up. So anyway, that's it for bros. I'm gonna move on. I mentioned, um, you know, the Lazy Americans, <laughs> the, the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight got a lot of attention. Netflix, um, definitely a strong stock here in the leisure services i shouldn't make fun of it I, I have netflix i watch it a lot too uh, but you know just surfing it's five here kelly slater stock on the five ema so that one looks good and then lyv this is more of your uh, concert you know live entertainment uh, stock and definitely you know, i'm telling you this is the uh <laughs> this is the boomers selling their 401k out man their kids are gonna get screwed they're just living their best life going to the sphere watching the eagles or u2 or whatever and uh, they're just spending their money. Live Nation is tickets, right? Entertainment. So go out and see some shows, man. Support your local theaters and your artists. That's fantastic. Anyway, looks good. Surfing the 5 EMA. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of clowning around here. Uh, all right. AROC. I got to go to the oil and gas because I mentioned some stock setting up in bases. And this is um, an oil and gas machinery equipment stock. You can see it's it has the ability to move, which is my number one criteria, right? This thing moved a lot. Now it's just kind of gone sideways, formed this little, you know, sideways action. And now it's starting to break above that base there, that consolidation period, which is pretty extensive consolidation. 2.65 last week and now 5.68 this week. So it's been consolidating since April 5th. This is Arch Rock. A-R-O-C is the ticker. Yeah, it's getting a little extended, but surfing the five there. And if it wants to surf the five for another couple months, I'm all for it. I think that one looks good. Um, a couple more. I've mentioned the uh, Druckenmiller stock. This one's just, you know, you know, anytime, yeah, this one's going higher. A lot of people like to follow um, the big whales like Buffett and uh, Druckenmiller. That's fine. That one looks good. WMB, another one of these um, oil and gas integrated. The group is not that strong, 143. But, man, this thing is just pulled back to the five. If you didn't get it there, man, it just keeps going higher. So that thing looks like a software stock. Um, that looks good. WHD, this is Cactus. This is an oil and gas machinery equipment stock. This group is 111. This one pulled back. We've seen this a lot recently, right? This little wedge pattern as it pulls back to near that 21. So I would be watching Cactus mm -hmm. maybe show up on our uh, ready list. Uh, cup with handle 64.58. What was the uh, standard? So that that doesn't look too bad to me. Um, Venom, this is 
been on our ready list before. This is one that I follow. Uh, once again, that wedge pattern, right, that we've seen rewarded so many times here recently. Um, so look for that to trade higher. Uh, v N O M, and then Baker Hughes B K R. Uh, this is one of these um, oil and gas machinery equipment. You know, one eleven. This that same group um, ran up. Now at this cup with handle. Let's go to the weekly here. And now it's just kind of going sideways here. Yeah, had a nice move uh, on earnings a couple of weeks ago and not giving any of those gains back, which is what you want to see. Yeah, 13.65 move, gave back what last week? <laughs> Nothing, flat city, baby, flat this week. So that's what you want to see. Um, just acknowledging, trying to keep an open mind with some of these other names. Um, GTLS, this is... Um, Machinery and equipment, again, the same group, consolidating in a base, a big, deep base here, and now uh, pull back below its five, but it, it's probably at its 10. And that doesn't look too bad to me. 41% depth in the base, a little deeper than we like, but yeah, I'm watching that one. All right, and the last group I'm going to cover is just, I've been mentioning the banks and I haven't been covering them at all, but these are some of those, uh, you know, regional banks, and the IWM is... About 17% of its, you know, financial institutions, small banks. We've seen that, you know, run up and then the flag pattern a lot there, the bull wedge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that one looks pretty good. That's SSB, South State is the ticker. SNV is another one. You know, the same kind of profile there where it runs up, then pulls back gently on lighter volume here. So pay attention to that. If if you want to own a financial you know, that one looks pretty good. I know the big popular one is SoFi, which has had a hell of a run. I got to go to the weekly on this one. This is another one IPO from 2020. Had to go through its uh, due diligence phase. And now it looks like it's, uh, you know, breaking out of this stage one base here. And and it's reached its, uh, its institutional advance phase. And I'm going to count how many weeks. I'm getting excited here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks in a row. So that's a nice move, up to $14 now for SoFi. A couple other ones, um, USCB. Um, yeah, broke out of this consolidation here two weeks ago. That's a hell of a move. Um, and then 30% uh, ran up last week, the 2186, and then pulled back this week to fill that gap. Let's see what that looks like on the daily. Yeah, okay, that gap fill. Not this gap fill, that gap fill. And anyway, it looks like um, the five is starting to curl lower, but maybe form that uh, bull wedge as it pulls back to the 21. Just making observations here now. Not um, saying go out and buy this. HBAN, this one uh, ripped higher and just uh, holding its gains. That's what you want to see. Uh, this is a little uh, bigger one. Regions, financial, not really. 23 billion, but a little larger, uh, not like in the uh, Russell 2000. Once again, move higher and you're just flattening out, holding its gains, which is what you want to see. Uh, Raymond James, this one is a little bigger now, 33 billion market cap, you know, gapping higher. These guys are going to benefit from lower rates. As we see the rates come in, the banks are going to do well. So, and the big kahuna, well, I shouldn't say the big kahuna. These big banks like um, Wells Fargo doing fantastic. Goldman Sachs is obviously another one. JP Morgan, these things have had big moves and just holding the gain. So Morgan Stanley, another one. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for watching MCStockCharts.com. We never give up, except for I have one more thing. After hours, we had some earnings reports and I saw that Keys was running higher. I did not have time to look at anything uh, this afternoon. I was running around. Um, Key site technology is up 8% after earnings. I'll have more on this tomorrow morning when I have some time to kind of look through some of the uh, the data. But that, that's a good move, right? POWL, this is one that's in the group that we really like, down 15%. This is electrical power equipment. I you know I don't know what they had to say. It's only a 3.7 billion market cap, so it's, it's not going to drive your, uh, you know, verts off the cliff, right? Vertiv, yeah, Vertiv is up after hours. So yeah, it's too small. This is a 52 billion market cap compared to Powell. Oh, AZEC, I'm going to say without looking, I bet you this is down. How about it?
What's up? Anyway, because this is a, um, <laughs> they've got, they design, manufacture, you know, the uh, residential building materials like woods or, you know, awnings, pergolas, things like that. Um, <clears throat> the decks, you have decks made out of uh, this material. So I think that people are kind of through, generally speaking, you know, just fixing up their homes and they're more into um, living their best life. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But, you know, maybe it had a good report and it's going to move after hours. We'll have to wait and see. Lazy boy. Yeah, come on, lazy boy. Up to almost 3% after hours. Uh, who doesn't like reclining in a lazy boy? And the last one is DLB. I don't even know if they report or not. They were scheduled to, oh gosh, up 10%. Thank you very much. We'll take it. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'll have more in the morning for you. Anyway, a lot going on in the market. Sorry for the long video. I just want to explain a few things about, you know, we're having debates, healthy debates here on Twitter. A lot of questions. So I wanted to answer those about MicroStrategy and A-Lab and uh, App Lovin and, you know, the stealth recession that doesn't exist. Uh, anyway, uh, at mcstockcharts.com, we never give up. Much love to everyone. And if you have a little profit, take some and donate to charity. You'll feel better about yourself and it'll do good for others. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.